Hi, I'm Kelly, and this is part two of the Nikon Focusing System series. Let's get into it. Right. This is uh, part two of the Nikon focusing system, where we're just going to walk through all the different focus modes and talk about each one of them. So let's um, let's jump in. All right. Uh, first and foremost, pinpoint. So let's let's go through the the options here. So uh, pinpoint AF is primarily for macro photography, in my opinion. All these are my opinion. Pinpoint AF, primarily for macro photography. It is slower and not designed for action at all. Um, I don't do a lot of macro photography, so I don't use it. But, uh, but pinpoint photography, um, you can, you know. Oh, and it only shows up in AFS, not AFC. So... There you have it, pinpoint AF. A little bit slower. Um, they say it's a little more accurate, but um, but it is slower uh, for macro photography. All right, let's run through the next one. Single point AF. So single point AF is uh, a smaller box. And remember from our first session that whatever you you have in the box is what the camera needs for contrast and so you have to have enough contrast inside the inside the box here right so i've got this this really great microphone it focuses no problem um, on this particular uh, image or this particular subject because it, there's lots of contrast if on the other hand you point it at something that has uh, very little contrast um, it may hunt a little bit before it gets focused right so uh, just be aware of that. Did a nice job. So there's there's actually some contrast there. Just wasn't a lot, and it took the camera a little bit longer to focus. So um, single point. Uh, what are you going to use single point for? Um, anything where a subject is close to you. Uh, anything that uh, you've got some minute detail that you want to make sure is in focus that probably isn't moving. Uh, a, a lot, right? So if you've got a tripod or someone's being very still and you want to use single point, um, you can certainly use that. The The closer something is to you, the bigger it'll be in the viewfinder and single point can make, uh, can work, right? So so that's single point. Um, wide area, small. Wide area, small. So obviously the box is getting a little bigger now. And wide area, small. I typically use wide area, small for wildlife. Uh, wildlife that is large in the distance, but but you know significantly um, filling up at least some chunk of the frame, or uh, it's very close and it's filling up a lot of the frame. So I'll use it a lot for wildlife for birds very close, or um, like I said, um, larger wildlife that's uh, a distance off. So um, very helpful. Keep in mind that. Um, in every case, the camera is going to try to focus on the a area inside the focus area that has the most contrast to focus that is closest to the camera, right? So, uh, so there's a good example, right? So in this case, it found the most contrast, even though the lens, right? So the lens was closer but the camera found a little more contrast in those buttons and up here, obviously lots of contrast with the, with the Nikon logo. So it may or may not be exactly what's closest to the camera. It's what it can find with good enough contrast to focus that's closest to the camera. All right, so that's wide area, small, and I used a lot for wildlife. Let's go to the next one, wide area, large. Wide area large, the box is a little bit bigger. And again, it's just going to um, take whatever it can find inside the focus area and um, focus on 
on that. That area is just bigger. I, I use wide area large for birds in flight, uh, for, uh, for wildlife that's really large and it fills up a lot of the viewfinder. Um, it's helpful. Um, it's helpful because you get more inside the focus area where the camera might find contrast. So, um, depending on what you're shooting, it may, may be, um, perfect for you. So, um, that's wide area large. Now on the, on the Z2, um, you have these other options, wide area, large people and wide area, large animals. It's really not animals. It's dogs and cats, not all animals. And, uh, you know, these are, these are helpful. I use them, um, quite a bit. I, I don't do a lot of animal photography, um, dogs and cats. So, um, and I'll explain why in just a minute, but the wide area, large people I do use, um, it's, it is certainly helpful. Um, it does, um, give you a smaller area for the camera to work with, to find uh, face and eyes and that type of thing. So, um, again, it can be, it can be very effective. Now, the, the downside to this is that the box is stationary and it doesn't like track or move around or anything. So if the person is not right in the box, if the person is off to the right or the left, then you're going to have to move the box, obviously, to get them inside the box or the camera's not going to focus on them. So that you lose some flexibility with, uh, with this mode, but if you're subject to stationary and not moving around a lot, it can be really helpful, right? Or if the person's moving around a bit and you always want the face to be in a certain part of the frame and you can just track with them, it's also helpful. And I've used it with, um, with children and things like that too. So um, it can be very, very helpful. Same with, um, with dogs and animals and things like that. Um, the reason that... Um, you, you might want to use it for animals. Um, we, I did have one, um, one viewer that said, hey, you know, what do you use for animals? And because I don't use a lot of animals, um, I, don't, um, I don't use these modes very much. But keep in mind that the, 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 the struggle that you'll have with some animals is that their facial features, like their nose or something, is can be way far out, right, from their eyes. And if the camera can't find the eye for some reason, then it's probably just going to focus on the nose. So you're doing animals, you're probably going to be in a F8 maybe or um, F9 or something. Um, the, if it's a cat, right, it's more of a, a face, a, not a dog, then or the dog has a, you know, pug nose or something, then you might be at F5.6 or 7.1 or something like that. But you're going to want a little bit longer depth of field for animals to make sure you get their full face and everything and focus in the event that it doesn't quite get the eye or can't see the eye because there's fur in the way or something like that. So, uh, and in that case, uh, too, I would just say, you know, if you're doing animals and you want really good quality, you may need, because you're, you're going to have like a, 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 a wider depth of field, you're going to need more light. Um, so you might want to supplement with some video lights or something. All right, the next one, auto area AF. Auto area AF, depending on whether you're on uh, Mark One or Mark II, um, they act a little bit differently in terms of the menu system. So in the Mark Ones, um, auto area AF has a menu setting to turn on face or animal detection inside the auto area. If you have that turned on, then you can do face recognition or animal recognition um, across the whole screen. On the Mark IIs, you can see here, I have to flip over. It separates them. So I've got auto area AF, auto area A of people, and auto area A of animals. So these last two in the Mark Ones, you pick those via the menu system. So it's a little bit more cumbersome. Uh, I don't know why Nikon did that. They could easily do it this way, but they didn't. So uh, let me just talk about auto area AF for a second. Auto area AF has like one feature that I absolutely love for a certain type of photography, and that's event photography. So uh, in event photography, um, you get the opportunity to do subject tracking. You can do subject tracking 
in any of the auto area modes, right? So auto area, auto area with faces, or auto area with dogs and cats. Uh, I would primarily choose auto area and subject tracking, which I'm going to show you, with face and eyes turned on if I've got people, um, with face and eyes turned on if I'm shooting animals. So, uh, but let's talk about how this works. And so right now I am actually, I'm choosing the auto area AF with the people. So uh, let's take a look and see how this works. Now I've got my auto area subject tracking um, set up for uh, using one of the buttons. Let me show you how to set that up. So you are going to go to controls and then custom controls F2 and then you're going to pick at least I do F1 so you can do whatever you want but F you 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 select F1 and you you, you select subject tracking right so that gives you the ability to toggle subject tracking on and off with the same button. If you don't set up a button for subject tracking, then in order to turn subject tracking on, you have to hit the OK button to turn it on, and then you have to hit, like I think the minus button to turn it off. It's very clunky. So use a subject button to turn it on, and I would just say I was doing an event, and I must have shot at least a 1,000 frames at this event. I was there for five hours. And I pretty much use subject tracking exclusively. I, I found it, I tried it, and it was like a dream. I'll show you some of the shots that I took with my uh, 70 to 200 and some other ones. But it, uh, it worked really, really well. So the way it works is you select your auto area mode, and then you just... All right, so now let's talk about um, auto area AF. Auto Area AF has uh, really three modes, and on the Mark II, they're separated out in the I menu, and you can pick them this way. In the Mark I's, you just have to pick Auto Area AF, and then you have to go into the menu to select whether you want face or eyes or, or animal face detection. So um, they all work pretty much the same way, but you just different ways to get to them, whether you're in a Mark I or a Mark II. All right, so um, I'm going to pick Auto Area AF. I will tell you just by itself, I don't use it. Um, having the camera select what to focus on doesn't, like, never makes any sense to me. So I don't use it at all. But there is, inside Auto Area, with AF People, is something that I do use a bit, a fair amount. Um, but there's also a sub-feature inside this mode that I use a lot for a certain circumstance, and that's events. So um, let's pick the auto area of people, and the feature that I'm talking about is subject tracking. You do need to be in AFC mode, not AFS. So AFC and auto area mode, and then you're going to want to set up a function key to turn subject tracking on and off if you're doing events or something and you want to uh, you want to use this. I would highly recommend it. So the way you do that is you go to menu, controls, F2 or custom controls, and then you're going to you're going to pick one of your function buttons here. In my case, I use F1, and you're going to select that and then pick subject tracking. And this allows you to toggle subject tracking on and off and on and off with ease just with, by clicking the button. So really super helpful and I would highly recommend if you're doing events and things to uh, to try this out. All right, so let's, let's um, show how this works. So I'm in auto area mode and I'm gonna just hit my function button and you see I get this square, uh, my subject tracking square. And then I'm going to focus on it and basically, anywhere that I move my frame, right, it's going to track that subject and allow me to take a picture of it. And it's going to do a fantastic, a fantastic job with that, right? So, and it doesn't matter what your uh, what you're tracking. So, in this case, I've got face detect, right? So I could take a picture, but I could also just toggle, grab the face, recompose, take the shot and still get a really, really sharp image. The, the other thing to note, I don't know if you saw this, but I turned it on 
I track whatever it is I'm going to track, right? You take a picture of it, and the minute you let go, you can toggle it off and toggle it back on, and it goes right back to the center, right? So get a picture, grab a picture, grab a picture, recompose, let go. Look, it's back in the center. You can just shoot. You can grab stuff, shoot, recompose, grab something, shoot, recompose. It's just a dream. And you can, you're selecting subjects, recompose, take the shot. It's back in the center. Select a subject, recompose, take a shot. And you can do this over and over. It works really, really well. So, um, again, events, weddings, birthday. I just, it's great. Now, the one thing to note with this, again, just to be clear, typically in events, the the subject is not going to be like right in front of you. And so your depth of field is going to be at least, you know, eight to 10 inches deep, at least, um, depending on um, how close they are. But you should be fine with tracking faces at kind of event distances, right? If the person is really, really close to you and you use subject tracking, it, it may find some other feature, part piece of clothing or something, right? And focus on that and not get the eye because the depth of field is too shallow. So just be aware that as long as you've got a depth of field that's that's deep enough to get, you know, a, a person's face, then uh, based on the distance and the focal length that you're using, subject tracking is going to work fantastic and it will also track the person not just side to side but but you know coming at you or or moving away now i will say subject tracking is not as fast as wide area small or wide area large so somebody's moving really really fast um i would use wide area small wide area large for that right so um, track and field don't (laughs) I wouldn't use subject detection. It's probably not going to track, especially if they're coming at you or going away from you or something. Side to side is probably okay. But but if you've got fast moving, um, we'll we'll talk about it in a minute. You want a fast lens, you want a fast focusing lens, and you're probably going to want to use like wide area, small or wide area large. Like I would not ever attempt to shoot birds in flight or anything with subject tracking. Just... If you have a Z9, you know, go for it. The 3D tracking and all that. There's a lot more options with the Z9, which I don't have. Um, when and if there's a another camera besides the Z9, because I just don't need a camera that big, uh, we'll do another video on that. So anyway, subject tracking, very cool. You should take a look at it and use it. Um, I, I absolutely, absolutely love it. Okay, so those are all the, the main... F- uh, focusing modes, how I use them, just some some hints and tips that you might want to be aware of. Now let's jump to a couple of other little focus uh, tips and things just to be aware of. The first thing that um, I wanted to make a note of, and that is the Nikon algorithm for face eye detect, at least in the Mark 1s and Mark 2s, right? And maybe not the Z9. I don't have a Z9, so That'll be a somebody. Maybe somebody could t- test this and leave a comment below. But uh, uh, the face detection does need enough of the face to get um, proper eye focus. Essentially, the eye detection doesn't work if the camera can't find a face. In order for the camera to find a face, it least needs kind of the bridge of the nose um, or lower in order to see the face. And I bring this up, I brought this up and put it in a post on Facebook, and somebody um, chimed in and said, well, uh, gosh, I guess you're just going to throw your camera away, right? I I don't know why people get so defensive about these things. They're just no, it's technology, the algorithms work a certain way. And some people may say, well, why do you care? Because a lot of people, certain countries, their faces are covered, right? Um, We have people with masks on and so just be aware of it. I'll, I'll show you a quick little demo of a test that I ran just so you can kind of see how this works. But it's just something to be aware of. It, you know, it may or may not come up, but it may come up a lot, right, if, depending on uh, the country you live in 
where there's a lot of face coverings and things, it, it could it could make a difference. So if you're in a, in a situation where someone's face is covered, um, face eye detect's probably not going to work. Um, certainly won't work great. So you want to resort to some other options um, there. So hopefully these will help you. Um, love to hear your comments below. If you have any other questions, leave them below. And um, we'll catch you next time on the next video.